So today we're gonna to be jumping into the best protocol ranges for MOTC because we have a few. We're gonna be breaking down the vial, so reconstitution, so that way individuals understand how to research this peptide at home. We're also gonna be going over the stability as well as what other peptides or molecules to research with MOTC, so that way we can get maximum efficacy from our research. So with that being said, let's get into it. According to PubMed, MOTC is the most recently identified mitochondrial derived peptide linked to human aging and age-related diseases. Evidence shows it supports cellular function, may act hormonally, and has demonstrated potential benefits in diabetes, cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, postmenopausal obesity, and Alzheimer's. Peptides are not one-size-fits-all solutions. Factors such as age, overall health, mitochondrial function, insulin sensitivity, and individual goals all play a role in determining the best approach. Now let's dive into some considerations with MOTC and effective protocols for peptide use. This is what's been reported and I'm just going to start with the lowest dosage of MOTC all the way to the highest in research settings or clinical experiences. When considering dosage, some doctors and peptide circles suggest starting with one to three milligrams a few days a week to assess energy benefits and gauge individual responses. A daily dose of one milligram. Users have reported positive energy effects. Some individuals start with one milligram and work their way up to see about reactions. Now let's jump into some practical protocols based off research settings and clinical experiences, okay? For general support of insulin sensitivity, energy levels, metabolism, and mitochondrial health, a dosage around three milligrams three times per week to see exact response of the patient or subject and then adjust from there. We could split a 10 milligram vial into three doses and it will be a little bit over three milligrams per administration, e.g. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So that's just a starting point. A common dosage is around 10 milligrams per week, split into two five milligram administrations. And we could do this on a Monday and Friday, a Tuesday and Saturday, whatever days work best. So 10 milligrams a week and splitting it into two five milligram administrations. Another effective approach is to administer five milligrams three times per week. For example, on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, which also has demonstrated significant benefits for metabolic and mitochondrial support. Some protocols aim to enhancing fat burning and achieving stronger metabolic effects, increasing to 10 milligrams three times weekly for fat burning and metabolic effects. I believe if we want the extra fat burning, metabolic effects, and overall metabolism, we don't need to research MOTC up into this protocol. But it is still widely used. Human studies, this is ridiculous. I only said 10 milligrams three times per week. So human studies, some human trials have gone with doses between 10 to 30 milligrams per day at these higher ranges, increased heart rate or palpitations, injection site irritation, insomnia or fever. All right, we're going to be going over the insomnia because MOTC should be researched in the morning or pre-workout as it can give some people insomnia as it boosts your energy and your mitochondrial health, okay, function. It is important that the following protocols be consulted and monitored by a qualified professional. All right, now let's jump into reconstitution and stability. MOTC has been shown to have a little bit of a bite or stinging sensation or cause administration site reaction. So if we add a little bit more water per administration, then it can help dilute and hopefully mitigate this. And also, it really depends on the purity of the peptide. If we are researching or want to start with one milligram a day to see how this peptide responds, we could put in two ml and pull to the 40 mark five times. It's only one milligram a day, so I don't think it's going to be that potent. If we want to do three milligrams, what we're going to do is if we have a 10 milligram vial and we want to split it into three administrations, then the easiest thing we can do is add one and a half ml. So one ml plus a 0.5 or a half ml. If we draw to the 50 mark or 0.5 ml three times, that's going to give us three milligrams and 333 micrograms per administration. 
And then if we do that three times, that's going to equal pretty much 10 milligrams, okay? Not everybody wants to add this much water or administer this much water per administration. So if an individual wanted to add less, if they're not getting any irritation site reactions, then adding a little less water may help. But from my research, 0.5 has been shown to be very beneficial, okay? This is just off research. This is not medical advice. That's for splitting a 10 milligram vial into three administrations. Now, if we wanna just split a 10 milligram vial into two administrations, then we could just add one full ML and draw to the 50 mark or 0.5 mark two times. And that's gonna give us five milligrams per administration. But the easiest thing to do, and for the freshest and most potent peptides, if we're gonna be doing two five milligram administrations, 10 milligrams a week, or 15 milligrams a week, it's best just to buy five milligram vials, add 0.5 ml, and extract the full amount for your administration. So if you have a five milligram vial, and we put a half ml, and withdraw that full amount, then that's gonna give us the full five milligrams. Some individuals like adding less water, but to help mitigate or help with site reaction, then adding a 0.5 ml and withdrawing the full amount has been shown to be very beneficial. And that's the quickest way to break down these vials. Let's jump into duration now, okay? So protocols typically run four to eight weeks depending on mitochondrial health and individual response followed by a 30 to 60 day break. All right, so not everybody's gonna get the best results at two weeks, 30 days. So individuals may need to research for six to eight weeks to be able to see the benefits from this. And the one thing that we need to know, peptides work from the inside out. For not seeing the energy or the mitochondrial response right away, just know these peptides are working from the inside out and may take a few times or a few cycles of researching these peptides to really get the maximum efficacy or the benefits that we want. Or, we could use other peptides, which we're gonna get into right now, to maybe enhance our MOTC research, okay? Some individuals or biohackers start researching SS31 for 20 to 30 days to help improve their mitochondrial health as SS31 acts like a cellular cleanup crew, stabilizing cardiolipin, which in turn enhances the effectiveness of MOTC, okay? So the necessity of SS31 varies depending on the severity of mitochondrial health issues. SS31 in human trial phases has been shown to be very beneficial for individuals with severe mitochondrial dysfunction. Not everybody has severe mitochondrial dysfunction, so not everybody's gonna need SS31, but it has shown to be a cellular cleanup crew and enhance the effects of MOTC for some individuals that may have issues with their mitochondria health, okay? So not everybody's gonna need SS31, but for some individuals that may not feel the effects of MOTC, starting with SS31 and then moving on to MOTC 20 to 30 days after and then using MOTC for 30 to 60 days may be very beneficial, okay? These are just ranges. Not everybody is the same and not everybody's gonna need to research SS31 and MOTC, okay? Some individuals can just do MOTC and see excellent benefits. Check out this video right here if you guys are interested though in SS31 and wanna know the protocol, best dosage, everything you need to know, this video is great, okay? In our downtime when we're not researching MOTC, then it is beneficial just to keep NAD in circulation, either a couple times a week, once a week, a few times a month, whatever it may be, so that way we keep our mitochondria health up, so that way when we do research MOTC a couple times, a few times a year, it will be synergistic and complement it. So timing and tolerability. Morning or pre-workout is preferred, as late night administration may cause insomnia in some subjects. So although MOTC has a short half-life once in the body, in the vial it remains stable for up to 30 days if refrigerated and handled properly. So there is a lot of misinformation saying that once we reconstitute MOTC, it renders useless or we cannot use it for a second administration. This is not true, okay? So if we have a 10 milligram vial and we wanna split it into two or three administrations and after we reconstitute it, we wanna put it back in the fridge, it's gonna remain perfectly stable. It's mainly after two to four weeks that peptides lose their potency and no longer will be 
that stable or that potent, okay? All right, so for doing those higher amounts, if anybody's researching any higher amounts, which I don't think we need because there's other incredible fat-burning metabolic peptides out there because we can overstimulate our mitochondria too. So we have to be very careful and you should always consult a professional if you're using higher amounts, okay? I believe it's best to start low, work your way up, see how your body reacts and then adjust accordingly. That's important to note. So this is Casey with Living Youthful. If my video has brought you guys value, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.